the last few ones is a little more, um, a little bit more sophisticated. These are solar panels. They're producing power so they can pump uh, water. The sun is always there. Yeah. Is it? Yeah. This morning it was raining, huh? At least in Africa, it's always shining. The sun is always shining, isn't it? <coughs> Most, a lot, yeah. Can store it, yeah. It's 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 beginning. I think. I mean, battery development of batteries is something that is really ongoing. You may know more about it than me, but until now, it's not something that is uh, used very much. I think it's still quite expensive, but it's being. I think there's a lot of development. It's a free green energy. Um, nobody needs to move their hands, um, and you can pump it. So that that that's a good point. I mean, the way to to save the energy or is to pump it to the high place it already from the beginning. Yeah. So that's good solar. Here's a wind pump. Wind pumps also be used. When this uh, windmill is going round, uh, a rod is going up and down and pumping the water. When it's windy, you get water. So it's nice. But it has some problems. And uh, in this case, it was in uh, Tanzania, 1989, no, 1990. Actually, the transmission rod, there, was, there should be a long uh, iron rod here, uh, but it was actually broken. So, it was there, it looked nice, but it was not working, I mean, it was not used for anything, because it was broken. So instead, they had put a diesel engine here <laughs> as a replacement, so that, then they, it was pumping into this tank. Unfortunately, unfortunately, that diesel engine was broken, and it's... As you see, it's far out in Maasai area, and uh, they were not able to repair it. So when I was there together with Torbjörn, actually, uh, we went with an old uh, machinist from Denmark that uh, had taken the job. He, he heard about the problem, so he, we went there with some tools, and he managed actually to, to repair it. So lucky them that day and for some time. But... Um, not that sustainable yeah when it comes to the the uh, solar pump solar pump is not just the solar panels it's also an electrical pump that, that needs to be working and it can get broken the wind pump can get broken the diesel pump can get broken it's 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 something vulnerable that is uh, difficult to maintain in many places so it's um, it's usually quite not, not the preferred solutions when you come out to uh, s small villages far away from, from places where you can repair those things. And it's ex expensive, all of it. Also, the, we didn't say that about the solar panels. They're quite, still quite expensive, these solar panels. All of them have the issue that, that if it breaks, it, you have to repair. I mean, some things are, are so easy. For example, the dog well, the... Uh, with the rope and washer pump, carrying home with its pocket and so on. It doesn't need much repair, but some things need repair. The hand pumps, I mean, that's something that they have worked, companies and, and development organizations work a lot on the um, hand pumps to develop hand pumps that are usually working for long times and easy to repair. And they set up systems where, where there's a place in the country that they can repair. And they have you know, small repairs and big repairs. So they educate some people in the village to maintain the hand pumps. So they would do some things, you know, clean and put oil on things every three months, whenever it's needed. And then they can also do some simple repairs up the top of what is what is on top of the, above the ground. But then if there's something down there uh, broken, then they might need some people from the capital to come and, and repair it. But hand pumps are usually quite durable. So you see a lot of broken hand pumps around the world, definitely. Uh, but it is um, it's possible. Uh, it's more complicated with the with the diesel pumps. But on the other hand, <laughs> you can find a lot of places where it's quite difficult to repair a hand pump. But the guy who has a car, he know he knows how to repair that. I mean, it's 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 also about interest and. Uh, about um, how how much people feel for for it. 
some people can repair a car but not a hand pump. Then okay? that's a bit strange. It's not the ability sometimes. It's also who is responsible, who is. Uh, I mean, no, nobody wants to make a lot of work for all the other people and, and all that. Complicated issue. When you select a water supply system, now you're going to look at which water supply system you are going to put in your village here. There, I have to say there is no straightforward methodology. You have to look at the <coughs> possible sources. Look at the sources you have available. Think of what is the easy um, things, what is the relevant thing. Try to identify the relevant technologies that is working with these sources. You've seen a lot of examples on how to put, uh, I mean, you put a hand pump on, on a, these people don't put a hand pump on a lid. Uh, so there's some combinations uh, of things that are common in the examples you saw here. And then, in the end, you have to let the user select the technology. A water supply system is most often a common thing, common good for a group of people, let's say 250 people for a, for a hand pump. Um, so you let them decide in uh, what if there are more choices. So the idea is to to try to uh, look at what is possible, and then have a, a participatory process with the people on, on what to what to um, choose. One more point: you can also make fuel supply. If you have a very good water source, very good quality, but it's a bit far away, you can say, okay, let's people use. People can use this for drinking, cooking, and then you have another water source which is nearby but a bit dirty and you don't care too much or you don't want to treat it. In this case, it's, it's uh, from a, a place in Tanzania near the Lake Victoria Thor, and they have three different water sources. So, so the investigation here showed that they had a, one with very little water and they used that only for drinking. They had another water source that was a bit uh, easier, accessible, they used for cooking and washing, and then they had maybe the lake and uh, or the river or whatever it was that they used for washing hands or bathing, for washing clothes and so on. It is possible. People can manage. They know they know what is the good water, what is the bad water. Um, they may need education if it's a new water source you are establishing. You have to build that knowledge. 